So this is the title of the message, Faith Through the Word and Prayer. So let's go to the second slide. Okay. So what is faith? Faith is confidence in the trustworthiness of God. It's the conviction that what God says is true and that what he promises will come to pass. It's being more convinced of the unseen promise than the seen promise. Hebrews 11.1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. George Mueller, as I referred to earlier, he said this, and I think it's so true. Difficulties are food for faith to feed on. So when something becomes very difficult, remember, that's an opportunity for the Lord to get in there and take care of the situation. See, so often we take all that on ourselves. But when we give it to him, that's a difficulty that we can use our faith to take care of. And it can just swallow that up. So remember that difficulties are food for faith to feed on. Reading the Word. Now, I want to talk about this quite a bit. When we're reading the Word, we don't just, like, grab your verse of the day and go, okay, here's my verse of the day. Yep, there's my little app. Okay, great, verse of the day. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Great, Romans 12, 21. Great, done. Okay, now I can go on with the next thing. That's a checklist. That's not getting the Word inside of you, okay? That's not even thinking about the Word. That's just checking a box, all right? And so often we're like so busy with our lives that we're just like all over the place and it's like, okay, good, I got that much in. But you know, what the Lord, what the Lord really wants us to do is to take some time to think about his word. Think about what you're reading. And is daily reading important? Absolutely. It, it would be like, you know, thinking that you're going to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger by sitting on your couch eating chips, Okay. It's not going to happen that way. You got to work out. You got to do something to build up that muscle. You can't just sit around and, and, and watch TV and think that your muscles are just going to start to expand because it doesn't happen that way. You got to put some effort into it. Well, in order to change the things about yourself that you know need changing, in order to change the circumstances around you, in order to, to, to the people that you interact with, if you want to see a change in their behavior, the first thing you have to do is Start working on yourself. Because, see, the way we are is how we, how people around us act. So, you know, there's a the saying, hurt people hurt people. So if somebody's hurt, they end up hurting other people. Or if somebody is not a friendly person, they're usually not, they're just not friendly. Well, why do you want to be around someone not friendly? You don't want to be around somebody like that. You don't enjoy their company. You tolerate their company because it's the right thing to do, but you don't necessarily enjoy it. So how does that change? That changes by how we react. I mean, I, I, there are people that don't particularly care for me. I can't understand why. But, <laughs> and there are people that I, I have to really pray that I know I'm going to be around. I, I remember one lady used to say, you know, I've been coming to this church for years, and I have no friends here, no friends. But every time you talk to her, all she did was complain. She complained about the same thing over and over and over again. And, and you know, you try to be very gentle and try to, like, you know, say, well, maybe you need to find some things to try to ask them about, ask about themselves. I've done that. doesn't do any good. And it just kept coming back with whatever you said. It was always somebody else's fault. And it was very sad because she ended up leaving because she had to go try to find someplace else, and she had a pattern of doing this. And the thing that really grieved me was that you weren't able to speak into her because she wasn't going to receive, and she wasn't going to see that there was something within herself. And that's the thing that I think that we need to realize sometimes is that, you know, if... if people aren't reacting to us well, then maybe we need to pray and say, Lord, what is it that I need to change? And you know what? It may be as simple as you getting into the word changes you and you don't even know it. Because there's areas in my life I know that I look back on and go, wow, I used to do that? Or I used to say that? 
How can that even be? But now it's because I've spent time in the Word and the Word corrects things. The Word, God is so amazing. Our Father is amazing. He gently corrects us. He helps us to see the things that we need to do. He reminds us of the things that maybe we need to, um, when we're about to do something or say something, sometimes you feel inside, nope, I better not say that. And sometimes you say it anyway, and you know why you shouldn't have said it. But anyway, um, we need to make sure that when we're in the Word, the Word can do the work through us. It's like the Word says about cleaning up a cup. If you clean up a cup on the outside, the inside's still disgusting. But if you clean up the cup on the outside, some of that is bound to spill over onto the outside. And now you can see on the outside what you need to work on. So we need to make sure that we're really into the Word and we spend some time thinking about what we're reading. It's more important to read three verses and really understand them than it is to um, read 12 chapters and get nowhere, okay? It, you really need to, to try to get this into you. And if you run into scriptures and you don't understand it, don't worry about it. Ask the Lord to show you what it means. He may show you right then and there. It may come a year later. You never know. Just move on. Don't, let it get, don't get hung up on it because that's what the enemy wants to do. The enemy wants to see in the word, what did he do with Jesus? He tempted Jesus by throwing the word back at him. So what's he going to do to us? If we're, we get stuck on a passage and say, boy, that doesn't sound good, I, what is that about? Just say, Lord, help me to see, reveal it to me so that I understand what this passage is about, and then move on to the next verse, okay? If you don't read it again, if it still isn't making sense, go to the next verse. I like to dig in and get into a couple of different translations. I like to start looking at commentaries. I go and see what it means in the Greek. What does this word mean in the Hebrew? I, I like to dig in and like, wait a second. But then if I'm still not 100%, then it's like, okay, Lord, just you show me at the right time. And sometimes it's a message. Somebody's preaching a message, and I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Now I understand that, you know? So it will come to you, but don't, don't stop reading because you don't understand. Press in. Just move on, okay? All right. Let's go to, now there's some scriptures up there that you can look at. 1 Timothy 4.15, Luke 24.45, Ephesians 1.17, Colossians 1, 9 through 12. I'm not going to go through them all with you, all right? I will do Luke 24.45, and he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. If you don't understand it, get a hold of a scripture and start to, 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 to like, Lord, help me with my understanding. Your word says that you can open up my, the eyes of my understanding, that I can understand the scriptures, okay? All right, let's go on to the next slide. This is what I was referring to, was applying the work in the areas of your life that need to be dealt with. And when you apply that word, Okay, it helps us to know God. When we're in that word, it helps us to know him. We know his character. We're learning from the word what his character is. We learned one of the most important things to trust him. Because if you trust him, you can have faith in him. We learn how to handle the things that come up, all the circumstances, situations. What does the word say? Because as we get farther and farther away in our, in our nations from the word of God, the more and more acceptable evil becomes. How do you know what's right and wrong if you don't know what the Word of God says? If you're struggling with right and wrong, take a look at the book of Proverbs. That can really straighten out a whole lot of things, okay? Proverbs will really make your eyes open up and go on, oh, okay. <laughs> so, and then again, what happens with that? Then you ask the Lord to forgive you and you move on. You say, Lord, forgive me. Help me not to do that again. Don't let me repeat that again. Lord, I need you. See, when we're weak, remember the word says he's strong? So if we're weak, then look at it as an opportunity for the Lord to flex his muscles in our lives, but we've got to let him do that. We've got to want him to do that, okay? So the other thing that it can do is that the word shows us his love, his love for us. Can you imagine? Abraham was an example of this before, before Jesus came. But Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son Isaac. 
on, on an altar, okay? He was willing to kill him because the Lord said to do it. The Lord didn't want Isaac dead, but Abraham believed the Lord would raise him up from the dead. That's how much faith he had in the Lord. He didn't ask him, why do I have to kill my son? What's the meaning of this? Father, I thought start arguing with God. No. He just said, okay, that's what you want. That's what I'll do. And the Lord stopped him from doing that because it shows us, it showed Abraham that his trust and faith was truly in the Lord. When Jesus came, God gave up his son, part of you know, the Godhead, to come down into the form of an infant to be born and live through this world knowing he was going to suffer a horrific death just so one person even could have gotten saved. That's how much he loves us. But how do we really get that into our hearts? It's from reading the word. Because anybody can stand up here and tell you anything that they want to tell you. How do you know it's true? It's because you get into the word and you hear it for yourself. That's how you know. It's got to back up what's in the word of God. Whatever you're hearing should be confirmed in the word. We can trust the word of God, okay? And then he forgives those who've done wrong and repent. Now, you know what? Sometimes you, 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 you fall, you're doing something, you know what's wrong, you ask the Lord to forgive you. You, you had a real, a real addiction or a real bondage in your life, you know, something that, a temptation that you really struggle to overcome. And, and, and you keep falling back into it. And then sometimes people just give up. It's like, well, I'm just hopeless. No, you're not hopeless. Because the more you think that you just can't go on, the more that the Lord can do. But you need to ask him for help to overcome it and be willing to do that what he's asking you to do. So, for example, if you're struggling with a temptation, all right, and, and, and you give in to that temptation and you realize it was wrong and you're asking the Lord to forgive you, ask him to help you so that the next time you're tempted, that he strengthens you so that you won't make the mistake again. Ask him, like, get into the Word. Getting into the Word and, and, and scriptures, and I have scriptures for these things that I'll get to in a few minutes so that people can really write these down and get a hold of these scriptures. Because I'll tell you, when you start to get a hold of the word and you get it into here, okay, you, you hear it, you, you get it here, you hear it, it comes here. But when you get it into here, that's where you get in the power. That's where you're really going to start to be able to overcome those issues, okay? And you may fall back once in a while. Do not give up. It is not bleak. It is not hopeless. It is not the end of the world, okay? The Lord still, his word is true, and he has a plan for each and every one of us, and it's not despair. It's not just rejection. It's not just like, I can't go on. No, depression isn't an option, okay? With the strength of the Lord in you, you can carry through. May not be easy. I'm not telling you it's going to be like silk on a, on a hand. It's going to be sometimes rough, but you can get through it. And when you get through it, you know who got you through it, and you know you are through it, okay? And when those opportunities come again and you're tested, you're tempted again, all of a sudden you've got the strength to fight it, and there is such an amazing feeling inside when you're like, thank you, Lord, I know I beat it this time. I know I beat it. But don't ever just accept that, you know, like it could never happen again. Just always thank him. And be, be on guard. Be on guard. Because the enemy, he's not a fool. He tries to slide in his little snaky tactics there and catch you off guard. So just say the word, and when it starts to come that way, ask the Holy Spirit. Keep me on alert. I need to be on high alert for these things, these little, little tricks of the enemy, okay? And then know, be able to sense it. So, and he will. If you ask him, you'll be able to sense those little attacks and stop it before it even takes fruit. All right? The word is, our, is like a sharper, two-edged sword, and we need to use that. That is a weapon. That is the weapon of our warfare. Okay, so praying. Now, when we couple the word with prayer, you know, this, this gentleman, George Mueller, he was a, an amazing man, but one of the things that he always did 
is he would never leave until he prayed and read. He coupled it together because the, the, the word was inside of him and then he would pray and together is where he would make, it just made a difference. Like some of us will pray, some of us will read, some of us will, you know, maybe, well, today I'm reading the word, today I'll pray, tomorrow I'll pray. Do it together, even if you have to cut the time a little bit. And, and I got to tell you, one thing, I'm not, I'm not a morning person. I don't like mornings, okay? I don't mind mornings if it's like it's been up all night and now it's morning, that's okay. But I don't like seeing morning at like 5 a.m. That is not a fun thing for me, all right? I don't even want to know where the clock is at that point, if I can get an eye open. But I have to tell you, if it means that me really getting into the Word means getting up in the morning because that's the quiet time. I used to do it at night before bed. I now fall asleep. Sad. But anyway, it's reality. So now I find I need to read, get into the Word in the morning and in and, and, and prayer. And uh, yeah, that's a sacrifice because I have to get up. But you know what? It's worth it. It's worth it. It's, it's spiritual exercise. And, and the word just comes off the pages. It's just so cool to see what God does in his word. But praying is, is really the tool. That is our communication with our Father. You know, a lot of times people pray and they pray, God this and God that. They think God is like this. He's the creator of the universe, so he's way up here and he's kind of unattainable and and we've got this little tiny voice and we're hoping that, it, that he can hear us. But that's because we have this picture of God. What we don't have is the picture of the Father God. See, Father God wants to sit down with you and say, okay, listen, I want to hear what's going on in your life. I want to hear what you're thinking. I want to hear what you're feeling. I already know all this, but now you need to say this to me. Why? Because a lot of times when you talk to somebody, have you ever noticed how things kind of start to like, you have perspective on things and, or, or they have, they're able to speak to you and maybe give you a little bit of an idea or, or you're like, wow, I didn't see things that way before. So when you're praying and you actually think of God, that you're, you're talking to God the Father, God who's nothing is impossible for him. If something is, is possible, we don't need God, do we? But if something is impossible, we need him more than ever. And we need to start thinking of God as, as, as our father, the, 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 the person, the creator who wants to have a relationship with us, you individually not just collectively. He wants you to sit down like you're talking to, 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 to your next door neighbor, except more intimately, because you're probably not going to tell your neighbor the stuff that you can tell the Lord, and you don't want to because the rest of the neighborhood knows. So that's not a good thing. But anyway, you want to be able to talk to the Lord and, and, and pour out your heart. He's the one you need to pour your heart out to, but you need to do it in your own private space where you can really talk to him, Okay. And, and, and believe that he's listening and that he wants to answer you. Look at some of these scriptures. John 14, 13 and 14 says, And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, I want to tell you that there is some qualifications to that, okay? Again, when you're reading the Word, you know what's in his will. Don't ask him to, okay, Lord, I need you to change so-and-so. I don't like the way they are. I don't like the way they do this. I need you to change them. Change them, change them, change them. Well, I want you to know that God is a respecter of people, and he did not bring us here, put us on this planet, so that he could override our will. No. God put us here and gave us free will. That's why the world is such a mess, because it's not his will that's going on in the world. It's the will of men. How do we keep things together? Because the people that are believers and pressing into him are still trying to conduct things the way he wants them conducted, all right? But there is, there is an enemy out there. What does he do? He comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. And Satan's good at his job, all right? So where there's chaos, there's an opportunity for the Lord to intervene, and that's what we can be praying for, is more intervention of the Lord, all right? 
if somebody is out of control and they're, they're just a real pain in our side, so to speak, well, first of all, we need to really be praying, Lord, is it really them or is part of the problem me? And secondly, Lord, if it is them, please open up their eyes so that they see whatever it is that they need to see. Help change the situation. Maybe it's as simple as you don't need to be as in, in contact with that person as much as you used to be. But the thing is, is that you need to, you need to just see what it is, that how you should pray. Best thing to do is start praying for them. Father, whatever's causing them to act this way, I ask that you start to work in that. Father, heal their broken heart. Lord, show them how their actions are affecting others. Lord, minister to them. You know, a lot of times a bully is somebody who's a real hurt person, who has had some really bad things happen to them, all right, which causes them to act out. Why? Because if they act out, then nobody else is going to touch them, all right? It's a wall. It's, it's a persona that they project because they got some real things going on inside. Now, maybe they are just rotten to the core, all right? And they just absolutely need salvation. But most of the time, it's because they're hurt. Again, hurt people hurt people. So we need to be praying, what is going on? Lord, help them with this situation. The Word tells us to pray for our enemies. So if there's somebody who's really, you know, doing you wrong, whether they're an enemy per se or not, they're acting like an enemy, just pray for them. The only thing it's going to do is help you, if not help them. But I can't tell you how many times there's been somebody I've been praying for, and I, the situation just changes. It changes drastically. And I give God the glory and honor because it's a matter of, of prayer. It's like prayer and forgiveness. You know, if you're praying... There's a scripture here. Let me see which scripture it is. But it's about how you pray together. You pray and that forgiveness. When you're really asking the Lord to, to forgive you or to forgive them, it releases things. That, that forgiveness just releases a situation. If you're harboring something against somebody, you know, you really don't like them, you got to let it go. Because unforgiveness only makes you bitter. Unforgiveness only makes you that tension inside, that anxiety inside. Every time you have to think about that person, you have to be in that situation, you start to just feel yourself, you know? And, and, and that's not where the Lord wants us to be. He wants us to be at peace. So how do we get at peace? Well, again, his word, prayer, okay? Praying for the individual, praying for the circumstance, praying that you're able to just help me get through this, Lord. Help me not to react the way I want to react. <laughs> Believe me, you don't want me to react the way I want to react sometimes. You have to pray and act, Lord, how do you, you know, help me to handle it the way you want to handle it, not the way I want to handle it. And, and he comes through for us. Now, I'm not going to tell you that there aren't times where you end up reacting poorly anyway because you let your flesh get in there and not the Lord. We're human. It happens. But when it does, again, what do you do? You go and ask him for forgiveness. Sometimes you might have to go to the person and say, Lord, you know, hey, listen, I'm really sorry. That was our line. I really wish I hadn't said that. Um, but other times... It's a situation that you, you can't really say you, you forgive me because it's, it's a done deal and um, you just have, have to ask the Lord to forgive you and help you not to make that mistake again. You know, it's, it's important, but you have to be willing to forgive because forgiveness can be a barrier to getting answers. Forgiveness can be a barrier to what the Lord wants to do. And as you can see, we have um, Ephesians 5, 20 is there. Your father can... Um, he is your father, and you can pray to your father. He wants a relationship with you. He is not a distant God, all right? So what prayer does, it builds our faith. It brings us closer to him. It helps us face problems when they come. It gives us the confidence that he'll work on a problem, relieves anxiety and fear as we trust God. It helps to keep our eyes on him and not on the problem, and it gives us direction and purpose. Prayer is, is key. Without prayer... And if I don't know what time it is, we're in trouble. Okay, and without prayer, we really can't do anything. It's his word and prayer coupled together that are going to change our lives. Okay, the next one is, this is a super important one. Never make a decision until you've taken it to the Lord in prayer. 
wait for an answer before deciding. I cannot tell you the importance of waiting on the Lord, okay? If you make a decision, I, I, I've seen people that have like, well, I'm moving. That's it. I'm going. Well, where are you going? Don't know. Don't care. Don't have a place. Sold my house. I'm, I'm, I'm just out of here. I'm fed up with everything and I'm gone. Okay, and then the next thing you know, they got some real issues going on where they're at because they just moved because they were angry, all right? They were just fed up with everything, and they just thought that, that changing locations would solve their problems. Well, the problem is, is they went with them. They went with themselves, you know? The problem was not where they were. The problem was is that they weren't facing the problem. The location wasn't the issue, but they make a rash decision. We need to make sure that when we pray, you know, when we're going to make a decision, pray first. Ask the Lord what he wants you to do. And, you know, i got to be honest. Ask him for confirmation, especially if it's a big decision. If you're talking about changing jobs, locations, school, whatever it is, ask him for confirmation. Because, you know, he's not going to tell you no. You, you heard from me. He wants you to be able to know how to be led by him. And learning how to be led by him is being able to know, Lord, this is, it, okay, I'm hearing it now out of the mouths of two or three witnesses. I'm hearing it from other, you know, I, maybe it's a, a prophecy that came across. Maybe it's just you're reading the word one day and it just, scripture just leaps off the page and you're like, yeah, then it, I, I'm, on, I'm on target. I'm on target. You, you just need to have that confirmation. And, and you'll know. It could be a conversation you're having with somebody that has nothing to do with it, and all of a sudden they say something, and it's like you, you know in your heart, you just know in your spirit that that's that confirmation you've been waiting for. You know, So ask him for that confirmation before you have to make any serious decisions. Because as we all are learning to le live, to hear the voice of the Lord, to know how to be led by him, inevitably we're going to make some mistakes along the way. You know? And the more time that you're able to press in, the more time that you, you get it right, that you really is the Lord, then the more you're confident in as, as you get older. I mean, I know there's a lot of times where it's like, okay, I know that this is the Lord. But, you know, there's other times when I'm like, no, I'm not 100% sure. Is that really the Lord's leading or is that because that's something I want to do? Or is that because somebody suggested and it sounds really good? But you know what? That suggestion may not be the Lord. And that's what we need to find out. Is that really the Lord or is that just me? So, and that's where you need to pray and just and, and get for confirmation. Okay, so the next thing I would say is, I love this one. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, Sometimes the easiest thing I love to do is when I'm trying to get a scripture because I've, I've got an issue going on, and that's the next thing we're going to start to cover is how, what are some of the scriptures for different things that come up. Um, I, I speak it out loud because I'm hearing that scripture. And it's faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes from the word of God. So when you're reading the word, okay, and you're speaking it out loud, that's getting into you. It's getting into your spirit. There are scriptures that I live by. There are scriptures that are my go-to scriptures in situations. And when something's going on, boy, those are the scriptures I'm hitting up. And, and, and those are the things that you need to do. You need to find out what scriptures apply to the things that you're struggling with the most. And, and put them down on Post-it notes if you have to. You know, um, index cards. Put them in your phone as a reminder. Do a notification to yourself. Anything to make sure that you see those scriptures that are going to keep you strengthened and keep you from doing the things that you know that you're struggling with. You know, keep the word in front of you. And, and I, I can't stress enough. And then speaking the word, hearing the word. Put your audio, you know, your, your, your audio Bible on, okay? Listen to the word. You can listen to what you're driving, while you're cleaning, while you're doing, you know, sometimes it depends upon your job. You might be able to have that going while you're working. I, I tend to not be able to do that because then I start listening and I'm not doing what I'm doing. So um, <laughs> I have to do that at different times. But these are things to do. Don't, you know, get the word into you. Eleven, 
And we're going to start looking at some of the scriptures. And some of these scriptures are common things that I hear people talk about all the time. They've got habits that they, they need to break. Well, first of all, 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So that means we've asked him to forgive us, and now he's cleaning us up, okay? So we mess up again. Pick yourself up and keep going. Do not despair. That's, d- despair is not from God, all right? So don't beat yourself up. You fell. Okay, great. Now get up and move on again, all right? You keep trying. You, you got to be like the, I don't know if any of you ever remember those little punching bags I used to have with a kid. It was like a clown punching bag. You punch it, and the thing came back up at you. Do you remember that? Hey, loose flash, that's got to be us, all right? We mess up, we need to get back up. And no matter what, we don't fall down. And if we start to deflate, you got to get back into the Word. you got to get back into prayer. Because we are not, we are Christians, we are resilient. Why? Because the God the Father... God, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and the Holy Spirit are all living inside of us if we've asked him to be our Lord and Savior. And that's what you've got to remember. Greater is he in me than he who is in the world, okay? Can I do all things through Christ who strengthens me? Yeah, I can. Are all things possible with God? Yeah, there's nothing impossible. So why is it that I fell back again? Okay, pick yourself up and move on. Don't get stuck in that place. You get stuck in that place and you will not go forward. You've got to get unstuck and keep moving. And don't let anybody beat you up because I'll tell you, the enemy will use people. When you fall down, the enemy will be right there to make there's somebody there pointing, I told you you couldn't do it. I knew that you were. You know what? you got to get to the point that you'll let that roll off your back because that is not the voice of the Lord that's speaking right now. That is the enemy. And he is under our feet. He is defeated. And he wants you as defeated as he is. And if you can overcome that, then you've overcome him, and he's got no power and place in your life. So you cannot give place to the devil, okay? Don't accept those lies. Don't accept those words. Just like, okay, Lord, forgive me. I messed up. Help me to get over this again. And that's the best thing you can do. Philippians 4.13, again, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Temptation, Ecclesiastes 1.9, and there is nothing new under the sun. So that tells you that no matter what it is that's going on, okay, there's nothing new. Mushrooms have been around for, you know, since the beginning of time, magic mushrooms. You've got all these different things that have happened, okay? You, you, marijuana, it's a plant. It's been around, guys, all right? There's temptations out there. There's nothing new under the sun. But you know what? The word works. So if you're tempted, don't think, well, this is a new thing. Nobody's ever encountered this before. It's just a variation of an old thing, all right? There's nothing new under the sun. 2 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation has taken you, but such is common to man. But who's faithful? God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. But with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you are able to bear it. This is one of my go-tos. I love that scripture because when I can get tempted to get angry, all right? And sometimes I get a little upset about things. I get upset when I hear what's going on in our country. It can very, it can upset me. And I have to really make sure that I know that, you know what, there's nothing new under the sun, and that he makes a way of escape. I don't have to worry about it. He's got this through me, through other believers. We're going to be okay, but we got to trust him. So we have to really get these, these temptation things. There's a lot of things that that applies to, as you know. So that's a scripture that I absolutely love. It got me through a lot of things in my early walk with the Lord, a lot of things. And and it, it, it made all the difference. Matthew 26, 41, watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, watch, pray, 
Don't put yourself into situations where you know you're going to be around people that are going to drag you down. Don't get yourself into, don't go to places that you know you're going to be tempted. Don't hang out. You know, there's things that you know to do. Don't even put yourself in that position, okay? And if you have to be put in that position, you need to be praying ahead of time and saying, Lord, help me so that I do not, I don't fall into it. And he will make a way to escape, but you've got to be willing to take it. And that's the hard part. Sometimes we've got the escape right there in front of us, but we're not willing to take it. Anxiety. There are so many people I know that are suffering from anxiety. And, and Matthew 6, 25 through 34, I'm not going to take the time to read it. I want you to, if you're suffering from anxiety, I really encourage you to get into that scripture. 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all care upon him for he cares for you. Philippians 4, 6 through 7, be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. You know, we are not supposed to be anxious because God can turn the impossible into possible. All right? And then anger, be be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Be angry and do not sin. Proverbs 29, 22, a man of wrath stirs up strife and one given to anger causes much transgression. If you know you're an angry person, you need to pray and ask the Lord to help you curb that anger because you don't want to cause somebody else. And and now there's some people that just like to cause trouble. Have you ever met somebody like that? They just like to stir up trouble because it's really fun. And then they just sit back and watch everybody get all riled. And I think this is like, this is so entertaining, right? You need to pray for them. Um, All right. They need a lot of prayer. And that is an example of somebody who likes to stir things up. And you just, they need a lot of prayer. Ephesians, don't be that person either, okay? (laughs) Ephesians 4, 26 to 27. Be angry and do not sin. And don't let the sun go down on your anger and give an opportunity to the devil. You don't want to give him any opportunity. And when we're angry, there's an opportunity for him to get in there. All right? Um, James 1, 19 through 20. Know this, my beloved brethren. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So we want to have that righteousness of God in us, and the anger doesn't do it. So if you get angry, don't sin. Ask the Lord to help calm you down. You know, don't go punching out the walls. That ends up usually causing uh, broken bones and, and ER visits. So, and, or anyone else for that matter. Just Ask the Lord to help calm you down and find out what your triggers are, what causes you to get angry. Those are the areas that you need to work on with him through the word and through prayer. Um, Matthew 21, Matthew 5, 21 through 24, that's another scripture that, that will really help you get through things. Okay. Um, Jesus got angry, but all he did was clean out the, uh, cleaned out the temple when he did. Grief. Grief is another one. Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Matthew 5, 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Thoughts. People can have thoughts. Now, sometimes your thoughts are going to be things that, um, oh, I think so-and-so thinks this about me, or I think so-and-so did that, or I think blah, blah, blah. And you don't know. You don't have facts. You just think. You suppose, you assume, you surmise, okay? Um, Other times it's you're tempted, you have all these thoughts hitting you. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5 really addresses this. For we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. For the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments, which is thoughts, reasonings, imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. 
stronghold can be like a castle, like a, like a fortress. It can also be anything that wants something you rely on. Um, the arguments, reasonings, things that, that, something that fortifies an opinion. So a stronghold is something that really can take a big grasp. But you know what? God pulled it down. He can take care of all these things. It's just a matter of us realizing who we serve, who lives in us. What can we do? We, this, this word of God, you know, I, my husband's always teasing me because I use my phone. I use my Bible at home, all right? But it's so much easier to bring my phone. And I make notes on it, and I have my little pen, and I can write my little notes, and I can highlight on my Bible app, and I have all kinds of really great little things, okay? So I have that with me. But, you know, the thing is, is that whether you're using it, your physical Bible, whether you're using your app, whatever method you're doing, get into it. Make sure that you can make notations in it because this is how the word is getting into you. And even that, that scripture I just read to you in Corinthians, okay, in 2 Corinthians, that scripture is such an awesome scripture. I, I, the whole Bible is awesome, let's face it. But, um, you know, ponder it. Think about it. What is it really saying? What is that saying? 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5. There's so many scriptures in there. You're going to find your own favorite go-to scriptures. And those are the things that you'll hang on to. And when you start to read, it's going to jump off the page. You're going to be like, yes, highlight it, write it down, get it into yourself. Because when things come, you need to pull it out.